Today, we are gonna be dissecting what the candlesticks mean. Yes, I use the time and sales, but the candlesticks and the candle bodies themselves also tell a story, and today, we are gonna be reading them like a book in this video. Now, I'm gonna be going over a few examples and really trying to break down these few examples. I'll probably be going over like three or four tickers and just going over exactly what I'm thinking during the trade, because these are gonna be trades that I actually took, and we're gonna, buy, we're gonna be dissecting every single candle, because this helps a lot. Not only does time and sales help, but also how it opens, how it closes, every single candle is a book. And it's about what happens inside the book that really matters, because you can't judge a candle by the cover of the book. You have to figure out what it was doing during it, and that also plays along with time of sales, but we're just gonna go over the candle structures today, and not that pattern, ICT, smart money concept stuff. No, this is straight, raw, not named stuff. Just, just like those diet plans that all have names, those aren't good for you. Same thing with this. This is not named, this is like through my own experience, and let's get right into it. NVIDIA. Number one, like I said, every single candle tells a story. We're on the one minute here. Again, I like to see as much, I like to see as much detail as possible, and this is why we're on the one minute right now, especially for this example. This is exactly how I execute. Now, if you're not a fan of the one minute, it doesn't matter. Everyone's a fan of different sports teams. Same thing with here. It doesn't make it right or wrong, but this is what I use to be profitable. Now, we could see the general weakness. Number one, just overall, no, it's weak, right? From the one hour time frame, you guys could tell it's weak, came down, people taking profits and correct it down. Then we go to this one minute pre-market, we already started coming down. So we already know it's weak, right? Doc opens up, right? Now, usually we're not really looking at the first minute or two or five minutes just because it literally could do whatever. But for this example, I took it off the first two minutes. So that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at. We came up, came down, we already showed this weakness right here, a continuation of this weakness. We tried to come up, we went green to red, and then we started tanking. A very strong red body. Sellers are in control in that candle. Now yes, it could easily flip, but everything's probability. Just because you have a 99% probability doesn't mean that there's not a 1% chance of something happening. So. If this is a 99% chance of it continuing to go down, there's still always a 1% chance of it coming up. And that's why us as traders, we don't have 100% win rate. There's always a chance and a probability that we're gonna lose. So this isn't 100%, but there's a higher probability of everything that I'm saying. There's a higher probability of this thing falling versus coming right back up. So this is a higher probability of a downside move. Buyers tried, they failed, sellers took control absolutely killed them then we start coming down start coming down start coming down we broke this 115 level but then see what happens right here buyers are starting to show themselves just a little bit right but we're still pretty weak especially after knowing how that one hour is knowing how pre-market is knowing how this is looking there's still some sellers here but buyers are starting to hold themselves up a little bit in this area now this is where like this is what I call the do or die especially this is why I don't trade the first two to five minutes and this is why especially if you're new do not trade the first five minutes this thing could have held up right here and then easily opened here and then started coming back up what did it do opened came up a little bit absolute sellers took control green to red sellers absolutely killed this close under that candle right here still showing that weakness so not only did we get past that two minute rule to where this could have easily flipped, it tried to flip, came right back down. Weakness, there's a lot of weakness here, which allowed me to stay in the trade even longer. Now, green to red again, buyers starting to show themselves a little bit, but what do you know about the size of this candle? It's a lot smaller than this one and this one, showing that we are starting to slow down here which means if you're in a position, you could start to take some profits here. Why? Because we have the little wick right here, right? We already had something like that and then we came down aggressively again. So it's starting to slow down a little bit and we have a smaller 
candle body, which means that the sellers are starting to slow down a little bit. They're not as aggressive. They need a little bit of pullback. This doesn't mean the move's done, but statistically, probability-wise, mathematically, I've done the math. I'm starting to take some profits here. Not fully out, but I am starting to take some profits here. Now, like I said, buyers needs a little pullback. How do shorts cover? They buy, right? They buy it back. So this is why it's okay to see a pullback like this, especially a small candle like this. If it's under this previous candle, which it is, and it came down a little bit more, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. What matters is as long as it doesn't come above this area right here, it's still just like a regular pullback. As long as it doesn't come like right above there, it's still a general pullback. And look how small this body of the candle is. Regular pullback. Then we come up and retest this area. It's usually what happens. Came down again. So it's still showing some weakness here, right? Now, like I said, probability wise, that has a higher probability of it coming down. Guess what happens? Came right back up. So there's obviously something in this area. Buyers are starting to come up just a little bit more than they usually would. This isn't a regular pullback. Buyers are somewhat there. We still have this general weakness right here, but by then I should be like 75% out and just have the runners until above that area. Cause this is where buyers kind of just lost it right there and sellers took control. So if sellers lose that control, that means the buyers are starting to push over and I should be out. Came up, look at this, doesn't really know where it wants to go. It could go either way. Then buyers, guess what buyers just did right there? Buyers tried to come up, right? We went red to green, buyers try to come up. This could easily broke out of over here. If it broke out above there, I'd been fully out. But guess what happens? We came right back down, right? This is why we create this zone right here because price is unpredictable. It's unpredictable in certain instincts like this to where it can go either way. It could have went here, but probably looking at the time of sales, which I was, probably showed that there wasn't a lot of buyers and sellers just weren't there yet. Three buyers could push this up if there's no sellers there, right? But until sellers get there, it can come right back down. And this is why the time of sales is super important because it could show a green candle, right? It could show a candle like this, just like that, and it could be made up of a few buyers, right? Versus this candle right here, it could be made up with a lot of sellers, right? And no sellers here. There was no resistance there, right? It could have showed that. And that's why it looked like it was trying to come up, but there's only like a couple buyers there. And as soon as a couple sellers come in, we could have came right back down. So that's why time and sales is super important to know the story of the candle because that could have been made up of five buyers and it just so happened that there was no sellers there and it was easy for them to push up. But that's why time and sales is very important. But let's go back to this. We come right back down, right? So showing that this should have came up and then we came right back down the next candle. Sellers are still here. We push right under here. You guys see another push right there. People taking profits. Another thing is, especially if it only goes to 50% of that previous candle right here, only about 50% of that, another sign that it's just a pullback right now, another move down. Now it is starting to get a little bit slower here because there's not a lot of space after it broke down, right? We already starting to slow down this area, one sign. This candle, it looks too perfect down like that. We already had that, right? This was already this down move. Then we came up a little bit, then another down move. And then we're already starting to come up a little bit. And then we came down again. Like it's just not going to keep going like that, right? It's got to stop eventually. And from this 116 to 112, it is a little bit overextended, but it doesn't matter because it keep it could keep going down. But statistically, I should be like 90% out by this point. After this move, take some off, pull back, continuation, I should be 90 to 95 percent out next thing you know we came right back up erased this candle and that candle right there showing that buyers are stepping right up at that 112 you might give it a second i'm fully out because exactly what happened was then we just consolidated back and forth until it was able to regain some sellers because the sellers took all of their energy out in the first 10 15 minutes 
and buyers just aren't strong enough to bring it up. So sellers were just waiting around, trying to regain strength, and then it finally did, and this is why we had this huge sell-off for the entire day. But that's basically the story of NVIDIA and the candlesticks. Now, I'm gonna do one more example before we go. Tesla, perfect example of this, right? Tesla, we had a nice bounce off here at 215. Number one, we were already looking at upside and the pre-market, we broke above it, came back below it, up, down, up, down. Consolidation, right? We had this green candle right here. We could already see how big of a candle this is. Then we started seeing a little bit of selling pressure, which is all right, because then it went red. Sellers were starting to take control and then buyers were like, absolutely not killed this thing up right absolutely move this thing up about two dollars almost and then came right back down all the way to the open of this and then came right back up to about that 50 percent point on that candle and then we slowly started coming up this is a great example of me not taking this it's just too indecisive for me how are we gonna have this candle then we come all the way back down again and then we have another wick we opened up. Then we have another wick we opened up, came back down again, and then came back up. There's too much selling pressure going on for me to take this. Now, what I would be looking at is a reversal. It came up, it went literally red to green. Every single time this thing opened, it went red and then came back up to green. I am not playing around. It's either you want upside or you don't. You can't Break all the way down, come back up. Break all the way down again, come back up. It'd be different if it was only like one or two candles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six candles every time it opened, it came down. Every time it opened, it came down. And then Tesla had enough. This is exactly where I'd be looking at for a reversal right around this area. And it just so happened to be the cleanest downside move ever, but it's showing weakness. Sellers want this. Number one, look how big this is. And then look how smaller it gets. Smaller, 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 smallest candle right there. Next thing you know, sellers really start to show themselves. Literally erased four minutes of work for Tesla. Next thing you know, tape was probably going crazy. We broke 218. Downsides really happening here. This perfect downside move. Look at that. Buyers aren't showing themselves whatsoever. It's all sellers coming in. Then we close, we open up, go a little bit green to red. Boom, look how big these selling candles are. We come right to low a day, and then we start to see a little bit of buyers coming in at this area right here. We come up green to red, come down a little bit, but look how small this candle is right there. There's wicks all up here, showing that buyers tried, came back down. Buyers tried, came back down. Buyers tried, came back down. It's struggling so much, this is where I would take out at least half, I should be, 75% out because that's already a huge move after a huge move statistically It's more likely that it will go the opposite direction You know sometime in that huge move you can't just go down about five dollars and not expect some sort of pullback So that's why I'd be taking profits along the way. I'd probably be 75% out here We see that it's rejecting this 215 area tries to go down tries to go down tries to go down now We just wait it could either go down or up this is the all the probabilities so now if it goes above this area i'll be fully out in runners but it didn't came back down broke a new low and then the next candle went green all the way up there and then back down to red it's just now it's trying to work so now i'll either be 90 percent out or i'll be fully out because now it has no clear one to go green all the way to red that was a dollar and a half move all the way back up just for it to come back down and then after sellers took that much control and didn't want to follow through on the next candle, absolutely not getting out of that fully out. And you guys seen what happened, consolidation, then a new low, then it came all the way back up again. That's exactly how you scalp trade. Get rid of all of that and just take the best, leave the rest. If this helped you guys, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.